Hey, Thrand here, and I'm here with the early period sax from Medieval Shop. It's an excellent blade. Uh, some people, when I first opened it, tried to say that it was not a period sax because it has a knife style hilt and a, a very unusual design. This is actually based on the Vimossi bog finds. And when we say early period sax, we're talking early period. We're talking about early period before the migrational era. We're talking about early migrational era and when the barbarian hordes were fighting the Romans. That means the early Germanic tribes, they were all fighting, they used blades very similar to this. They hadn't adopted the Spatha design or the actual early migrational sword design like you see on the ring hilt swords and the later Viking swords, the Viking age swords. So they didn't have the long double-edged blade with the classic hilt and the T-shaped uh, pummel. They had blades like this and these are very similar to like let's say early period Kolpeshes or Falcata where you have a hook in the hand to keep it from leaving the hand but it's also curved so if you hold it slightly back the way they've done this one this is inspired by the actual finds with rivets through the actual robust tang that's the shape of the hilt itself but it gives you an ergonomic reach or thrust so you can thrust straight out some of these would have been more uh, knife shaped at the point this is more of a broken back design but it's beautiful it's curved uh, it has a nice straight edge semi straight edge is slightly curved uh, but it's razor sharp made of en45 steel and i think it's a good reproduction idea from those finds and if you hold it in your hand you could clearly feel that even though some people saw it thought it wasn't period or didn't feel look comfortable it is very comfortable very ergonomic and it gives you the ability to cut out in front of you straight out easily and not to have your hand slip up the blade and this is very much shaped exactly like the ones that we do find a lot of the hilts and it doesn't allow it to leave the hand because it kind of hooks it in so it's a beautiful design it's very similar to like Charlemagne's uh, Saber. So a lot of people have seen Charlemagne's Saber and wonder what it is. Maybe that's what it was inspired by or some of the earlier ideas on blades like this. One of the other ideas is some people say that the tang on the later century saxes was just a tang. And that's true. It wasn't shaped like this. It was straight normally, sometimes slightly at an angle, not curved like this. And it would have been pushed down into a horn. Uh, wood or something like that and maybe glued in place. Sometimes it would have something pinged at the back but usually just shoved down into something like that. I think it became more of a tool and a blade to use at the spur of the moment in an emergency when they were shorter blades like that and they were using tangs like that. But early period when these were actually sword size, some of these are actually early, they'll say early Germanic swords. Uh, these blades were designed for combat even though they didn't parry with the blade itself, pattern welded, and it had to have a way to keep your hand from riding up the blade and it had to have a way of keeping it from coming from the hand and having strong grip, especially the big, broad, heavy blades to be able to cut properly because they liked a lot of cutting. You could tell by the way the blades are made and then being broad and back blades and not having very much uh, distal taper, just some profile taper on the longer blades. So that tells you that they were hacking a lot, not just thrusting sometimes, but hacking and they needed a good, strong hilt, much like a Mezzer later century. So yes, they went from having a design with rivets through the actual uh, tang, like you would do on a uh, modern knife, or like I said, a Mezzer later century, to using just a tang on it, like they would on the swords. But that also was the process of them making the blades when they started going to the Spatha design, and they put much different hilts than they did on the actual Saxes later, uh, Viking Age and Saxon Age, what have you. But this blade is an early period sax if you want to consider it that, or an early period blade like the barbarian hordes used. And we're going to find out today how much damage it'll actually do to this analog ballistics gel head. And I'm very excited. I believe it's going to perform extremely well. Speaking of saxes, there's two saxes that have been forged up at uh, Alsfolk Viking Martial Arts, and they want me to do a forged in fire style contest. I have done some videos recently where I kind of mimic the test from Forge and Fire, and they want me to judge the blades. They've been done as historically accurate as possible, uh, overseen by uh, author Von Eschen, the living historian himself at Ausfolk, and he made sure that they were done with real charcoal fires and in the same manner that they would have been made in the Viking Age. And these are saxes. These are later period, like Viking Age saxes. So we want to see how well these blades stack up. So we have Jason Peterson and Andy Freeman, and they both worked very hard to make these blades, and I hope to make it up there to be able to actually test them in person while Roland Vorzek is there. And if most of you have seen the trip before, it was an excellent trip, wonderful. Uh, we got to go to Arms and Armor and see them and their production processes of reproducing ancient blades from the Ewart Oakshot Institute, because they're all intertwined, they're all one, and we got to handle historical saxes 
much like we're going to be testing and we got to handle historical blades so it was awesome and this to be there Ausfolk is just an awesome place to be and to be hanging out with Roland Vorzeka we will come back with some excellent videos if you can go by Fundly and help me out uh, we're at $335 if I hit a 450 or actually a hair more maybe about 475 for optimal. 500, not even the full 600 mark. I should be able to buy the ticket if it's still early enough. If not, I'll do my best to try to get the ticket and get up there. I just need a little bit more help at Funly, and it's take Thran to Alsfolk Viking Martial Arts or send Thran to Alsfolk Viking Martial Arts. You should be able to Google it or find it on my Facebook page. I'll put links down below in the description. But I hope to be able to test those up there in person, and I think it's going to be awesome. But today we're going to try this. Uh, early period, 200 to 300 AD blade, and I can't wait to see how well it performs. This Famosi Sax, or early period Sax, is actually very small compared to the larger versions that were more sword-like that I think would have been used with actual round shields. But in that case, I think it would be used a lot more like a combat blade. So to start off, I'm going to come across and just try hacking right into the side of the head and the skull and see how well this blade performs. I'm having a feeling with the weight behind it and the shape of the handle, we should get a really decent cut into the skull. So I'm gonna come in from here and cut right into the head. And remember, this is not a sword, so it doesn't have the heft or weight of accelerating a blade to hack or cut through something in that manner. I have to pretty much put some body behind it. So we'll see what happens. I would say that we cut completely into the skull. Check this out. Uh, yeah, and through the jaw. That was extremely impressive. The jaw has been separated. I hit the jaw as well, and that is just bleeding out like crazy. I would say the weight of this blade, I would say the weight of this blade, and from looking at this, you can see how well that performed. It opened it up. That is definitely a kill, and that is through the bone of the jaw. And before we lose all the blood, I think I will cut it again. I'm extremely impressed. Crump, there goes my shoe. <laughs> In that case, I think I'll come back through this way. I'll try to come back with a cut and come through the head. That one kind of glanced up, but we cut into the skull. That is a cut where you can see directly into the skull. So that is hard. Well, correct, but it went completely into the skull. You can see it right here. All right, I will try a little bit higher up and not hit the jaw. I'm gonna come straight in with another cut like we hit it with, because I think that was the most devastating one. Yes, I hit just a hair above it and we chopped straight into the skull, taking a chunk of it out. That is just nasty. If any of you haven't seen one of these close up before, that is cutting a actual, I guess a sliver out, like you would pie or something, but out of a, a cranium. Out of a watermelon, no like Yeah, like a slice of watermelon. That's a good way of putting it. Oh, this one didn't quite go through the, um, right. the water. Well, this is a smaller blade, and it's taking some of my body to use it, because like I said, I can't totally accelerate just the blade. I mean, I could try that. I could try that. And even though I got some of the blood on my hand, it's not slipping much. I can still use it. So that's one of the things I like about the hilt. The hilt's a little slippery now, but it's not going to come flying out of my hand. I can tell that. It feels very secure. Let's try just using the weight of it and see what it does. Ah! Wow. Didn't quite make it all the way through. Just using the weight wasn't quite enough. Oh, it might. Let's see what we can do. I think that says it all here. These are deep enough into the cranium. This man would not be walking around. Yes, but maybe I think secondary that the 
Oh, this size, yeah. It's it's. This is more of a backup blade. This wouldn't be your primary sword at that time period. It'd just be a smaller blade based on the same design of a larger, larger sword-like weapon. That's why a lot of times they call the Germanic tribe swords. You know, at that time period when they found these. Oh, we lost our slice. I would say we decap the guy with it. <laughs> Our only flaw to this is we came in so low that we cut into the spine from here and the head fell off because of course we don't have shoulders. The same the thing we have here, we don't have shoulders. So we sliced under the head. We've seen this happen before because there's no actual shoulders, it's not joined anything cut through the spine and the head just toppled over. So yeah, did we make it through enough material back here that was actually gel that it would have been a deep enough cut to go into the bone? bone? Yes, we didn't go up under it completely and we went through the spine. So yeah, that was an excellent cut. I'm extremely impressed. I think it's performed extremely well for a small cutting blade of this size. Medieval Shop makes a good blade. I highly recommend it. And especially if you're into earlier period style reenactment. If you're into the earlier ages with the barbarian tribes and hordes and pre-migrational age or very early migrational age, or some of these still could have remained, this design, some of them, for a while well into the migrational age, just like we see Angon that are uh, remnants of the uh, old peel that the Romans used. So yeah, I think it's a great blade. I highly like it. I think this was a massive test because I have this so uh, greased up or oiled up with the fake blood and I still was able to use it. It didn't fly out of my hand. So I give this my seal of approval on an actual hilt. But anyway, if y'all can help me, be sure and go by, go by and check out uh, Take Thrand to uh, Also Viking Martial Arts or send Thrand to Also Viking Martial Arts at Funley. We could really use the help. I'd love to judge that contest in person. If all else fails, and I say this in contestants and everyone else, I will try my best to try to pay to have the blades shipped out to me, test them here, compare them, but it won't be the same thing, and then uh, give a, a determined winner of who I think had the best blade and how historically accurate it is, whatever I feel about it. And plus, we'll get the opinions of Aus Folk Viking Martial Arts, author Von Eschen, and Roland Vorzeka. But anyway, as always, Farvel. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can always support a Thane Thrand YouTube channel shirt that you can get over at ViralStyle.com at the Thane Thrand Merchandise Store. We have coffee mugs, koozies, a wide variety of shirts and hats. You can also help support us on Patreon, and if you do that, you'll also get exclusive content that can only be seen there.